Hey everybody, it's Krogh here, and today I want to talk to you about my thoughts, opinions, and somewhat of a review of Overwatch. And what you're going to see in the video today is some gameplay of me playing as Hanzo. I get some really nice picks here as the uh, sniper bowman that Hanzo is. I get to go on a really nice kill streak towards the end, so I hope you enjoy the footage as I uh, go ahead and talk a little bit about the game. First, I want to talk to you about a couple of my favorite heroes so far, one of which is going to be Hanzo, of course. The other is going to be his brother, Genji. Uh, strangely enough, Hanzo and Genji, in the lore of it all, are actually brothers. They are the Dragon Brothers, the Dragon of the North Wind and the Dragon of the South Wind. Um, Hanzo here, he is a defensive class bowman. Uh, his two best abilities that, you know, his OP abilities for his class are going to definitely be his recon arrow. Uh, he can shoot the recon arrow every 15 seconds, I believe it is, and it uh, it pings on the map and uh, shows a red diagram of all of the characters through the wall for you and your entire team to see, and it allows you to see where they are. It's like a giant wall hack, and the fact that he gets that ability every 15 seconds and it shoots out a radius uh, from wherever the arrow lands is pretty good. The other one is going to be his uh, special ability, his ultimate, which is an AOE. It fires a dragon that goes in a straight line for quite a ways, and it is very good at wiping out people who are, are encamped on objectives and everything else like that. It also works defensively to shut off lanes and to wipe out multiple people. Um, you'll actually get to see me get like four kills with the dragon with his special ability here in this gameplay video, so that'll be good. The other character I want to talk to you about is going to be uh, Genji. Genji is the cyber ninja. Uh, Genji is very fast, uh, very nimble. He has a dash ability and a double jump ability. Um, he is in the assault tree um, because he's very good at flanking due to his speed and agility. His, a couple of his abilities are going to be his, that are stand out are going to be his uh, deflection ability, which allows you to deflect just about all projectiles in the game, um, including specials. He's a very hard counter to Bastion. If Bastion comes up fire on him and he hits his deflect, he'll send all those bullets right back at Bastion and just blow him all to pieces. Uh, and then his other one is going to be his ultimate. His ultimate actually puts away his kunai knives and pulls out his uh, katana off his back, which is infused with the with the dra power of the dragon. Anyway, with that that in combination with his dash and his double jump makes him very squ uh, squirrely, and and his you can actually activate his deflect while his ultimate is active as well. And that allows you the, him to take out even the tankiest characters with an ease. Um, uh, going back to Hanzo, um, some of his uh, drawbacks are going to be he is not uh, a very fast character. He does not have the ability to run or double jump, anything like that. Like Genji, he can uh, wall run and he can scale walls and climb, but he doesn't. He can't run away very fast. That is his weaknesses are definitely going to be his slow rate of fire with his bow and the fact that. He doesn't deal well with uh, fast-moving characters uh, in close quarters. Uh, somebody like Tracer is a very hard counter to um, Hanzo if he gets caught. Hanzo also is, like, again, slow, so running away often is not an option. So if you get in a bad situation, um, usually what I do is I will kind of pull out his Tri-Arrow, which is one of his abilities. It fires an arrow that, like, that when on impact scatters into a bunch of arrows and actually ricochets off walls and everything i'll actually kind of fire that at the ground and at their feet and the arrows will ricochet and if i'm in close quarters sometimes you can get a kill off that way other than that you're pretty well screwed in close quarters combat i pull off some pretty cool kills here uh, but i have some experience playing this game as well as being a sniper usually if you're sniping you're going to pull out your secondary weapon like a pistol or something not the case in this game so I do pick up some pretty nice kills in close quarters, probably win some fights I shouldn't. Um, I do have quite a bit of experience with this game. I've been playing, uh, I played in several of the open betas uh, before the game launched. I don't think I got all of the betas in, in, under my belt, but I got quite a few of them. So, you know, what my overall opinion of this game is I, I really am enjoying this game. I think this game is uh, great fun. Um, I, I like the fact that it is, um, it, it is a both casual yet in competitive but it's not a it's not competitive in a nature like that is frustrating and aggravating it's i know people may have drawn these comparisons before but it, it's like team fortress where yeah it's competitive and you want to win and it's great to win and it's fun to win but if you're losing it's not like you know anger provoking keyboard smashing you know anger that comes from other games that i play such as um one game in particular battlefield so for an, an example here 
In this game, if you're pinned down by a bunch of uh, you know, bastions and your your team sits absolutely getting their ass kicked, you know, like you can switch out characters, you maybe come up the counter and pull it out. If not, you lose whatever. It's no big deal. On the other hand, in a game like Battlefield on Metro, and you're pinned down by a million L uh, LMG wielding infinite ammo box using players, it just makes you want to smash your keyboard. It is absolutely no fun. Um, I, I, I really don't get that feeling in this game. I really am just been loving this game, sitting back, enjoying playing, just enjoying the wins, the losses, and the experience. Uh, overall, I think it's great. Um, I think this game is definitely worth the buy. It comes in at an interesting price point on PC with the $60 for the premium, which gets you some extra skins and other out-of-game content if you're invested in the world of Blizzard, such as Hearthstone back and a character for uh, Heroes of the Storm, stuff like that, uh, or the $40 base package um, for just the game. It is $60 on console. I have not played the console version, but from what I've heard, it is, even though everything is the same, it is more slow paced on console versus PC, and that comes down to the more Twitch um, reflexes you have on PC, so the game is definitely more fast paced on PC from what I'm told. Again, I have not played the console version myself, so I can't draw a direct comparison, I can only go off of what I've heard from other people. In the, you know, in the regards of just so, in the whether you not should buy it, yes, yeah, this is not a free to play game. It does have microtransactions. The microtransactions in this game are completely cosmetic, completely optional. And um, they're there if you really like a character and you really want to invest, you know, some money into them. You can unlock the, their cool costumes and uh, spray paint art and everything with real money instead of having to grind it out. Um, to my knowledge, there is nothing on the unlockable side that is behind a paywall. Um, you can grind it out and you can unlock um, everything in the game with enough grinding. Uh, you get ra at different landmark uh, levels. Uh, you get these loot boxes which open up and give you random things you also earn a currency and that currency from the loot boxes you can use to purchase specific skins and specific items using the in-game currency instead of real money um, the other thing about the leveling system is the leveling system has no cap you can essentially level forever and ever and ever and continue to collect loot box after loot box after loot box again so you can collect everything in the game without ever having to spend a dime. Also, um, keep in mind at the price point on this game, uh, Blizzard traditionally supports their games for a very, very, very long time. You know, sometimes 10 plus years. And what they've said is all of the additional content is going to be um, free of charge. You're not going to have to pay anything extra when they add additional maps, game modes, and heroes. It's, all, it's just going to be all inclusive. And the only way I would see them adding, you know, cut, charging more money is if they did a full-on expansion like they do with, say, StarCraft. When a new StarCraft expansion comes out, you buy the expansion to go on top of the base game. Uh, even then, I don't necessarily see that happening. I don't think this game sit, sits in that specific model. Um, I just see it being more open and us getting lots of free content as the game rolls out. One thing that they've talked about, they're already talking about um, things they want to add in the next major update, which from what I heard is coming out late next month. Uh, next month being June, I don't know what time when you're watching this, but when the video goes live, it's going to be May. And then the um, the next content comes out in June in that contact patch. They're looking at adding competitive play. It was something that was in the beta and that was removed. Right now, it's pretty much just casual play. It's got unranked. The competitive play is going to be a ranked system where you can rank up through the, through the ladders and stuff like that. So it adds another layer of uh, competitive play to the game, something else to work towards your ranking versus just your level. Just adds more fun stuff to do, and I'm sure we'll see lots of other great content in this game. As it is right now, you have 21 very unique characters that fall into one of four categories, offensive, defensive, tank or support uh, the only real gripes about this game as a, as a team based is uh, sometimes you get teams that want to play their favorite heroes and not necessarily what the what the game needs my recommendation in that situation is you should if in that case maybe you should be the one that man just mans up and changes the character to be the one that is going to best suit the team if your team doesn't have a healer or a tank and you're playing defensive you probably are going to need these things and you should probably just switch characters if nobody else is willing to now other than that like I said this game is great fun. I've been having a lot of fun. I plan on uh, putting a lot of time into this game. You're going to see a lot more of these Overwatch videos coming up on my channel. Don't know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use them as background for commentaries, my regular ranty commentaries that everybody seems to like. 
or use them at do character reviews and and tips tricks i i don't know yet quite yet but we'll we'll see how it goes so you know we're at the end of the video like i said my overall thoughts is this game is great i'm not going to put a number on it or anything i will say um if you like team fortress if you like casual yet competitive shooters and then this game is going to be right up your alley i would definitely pick it up it's going to fill the definitely fill the void for me while waiting for battlefield one to come out and me to uh, sink a way too much time into that game I, i'm already very excited for that one um, that's a subject for another video Alright, so uh, if you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button, and don't forget to share it with all of your loser friends. Um, if you disliked the video, well then fuck you, you're a casual scrub, and uh, go ahead and hit the dislike button. And then, uh, tell me down in the comment section below, are you playing Overwatch? If not, why the hell not? Um, are you liking it? Are you hating it? I genuinely want to know. Go ahead and tell me. Um, Alright, thanks for watching everybody. It's been Krogue. Peace out. Bye.